Give me some of that long. Hard. Rock. What kind of show do you think this is? Jeesh. Classic rock, hard rock, and heavy metal from the 70s, 80s, and 90s. Plus, stick around for Plug In, where we support independent artists one song at a time. Take it like a man from a woman who knows music. It's time for Rockasms with Jen Mitchell. Hi everyone, this is Terry Lewis of Great White, and you're listening to Rockgasm with Jen Mitchell. She's beautiful, and she rocks. Great White song complicated from their 2012 album Elation has been rocketing up the classic rock charts thanks to fans continuing to request it on their local radio stations. And honestly, any song off of Elation is more than worthy of submitting constant requests. Right now, I've got someone for you who's anything but complicated. Between rocking the grounds at Farm Rock in Wakanda, Illinois, this past weekend and being on tour since this past February with dates running through next February, I'm honored that he could take some time out today to stop by Rockasms. So it's with my honor to welcome Terry Elus, lead vocalist of Great White, to the show. Hello, Terry. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. I have to say, Great White's performance this past weekend at Farm Rock was really one of the standout sets of the festival. Every band that played, those being Femme Fatale, Enough's Enough, L.A. Guns, Warrant, Sebastian Bach, and Queensryche, just to name a few, they really gave it their all. But honestly, you were owning that stage. You really got the fans into the show with so much interaction, Terry, not to mention your ability to really belt out those songs and project to everyone in the crowd, as though you were singing to them directly one-on-one. So in a festival-type setting, like that do you find it's difficult to connect with an audience of that magnitude wow (laughs) that's a lot to digest i know yeah thank you for the nice comments first of all you know every time i perform on stage i I get a bit shy at first uh before the show i get nervous you know i have to meditate i have to pray because i'm actually a shy person but when i go on stage i'm a different person i i believe that you have to be almost like a rock star in a way i mean i don't like to use that word but you have to give people a show you have to give people something they want to see, uh, something they want to hear. They, they want to see a show. So I give it all, all the time. Is it difficult to connect? I mean, it can be, but I would say most of the times, no, because I, I can feel the audience. I, when I sing to them, I can feel that. So no, it's all right. And I've heard a lot of musicians say, you know, I'm shy in my personal life, but when I get on stage, something happens. And I think really it boils down to, you know, you're on a mission. And it's Thank funny you. that you had already mentioned the small or larger venue thing because you must have been reading my mind here because I was going to ask you the difference there. What are the intrinsic differences between the two? To be honest with you, I, I do believe it's much more difficult to play uh, in front of a smaller crowd than playing for a larger crowd. Like recently we've done shows, um, I believe we did the uh, Iowa State Fair. It was, we had 15,000 or 16,000 people. Then we did Santa Cruz, we had 10,000 people and blah, blah, blah. So it's easier because you're on stage, you got the big lights, you got the big sound, and people see you as a rock star. But when you play in front of a smaller crowd, it's much more intimate. You feel almost naked on stage. It's really strange. You know, you feel naked. You you have to... Uh, well, there's something wrong with that visual, not to interrupt. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that, but when I play in front of a smaller crowd, I feel much more vulnerable. Am I going to sound good? Am I going to make a mistake? Are they going to like me? These questions actually go through my mind before the show and sometimes during the show. It's weird. Now, that's for me. I'm sure some other artists will not agree or disagree with me, but that's the way I feel. Right. Almost like being under a microscope where everyone can see every little detail. Oh, completely. I mean, you sit down, you have your acoustic guitar and you you can sing. But also, doing an acoustic set is also, uh, I love that because uh, here it is, you can sing or you can't. (laughs) You can't lie. You don't have uh, the big big lights, you don't have anything and uh, you have to deliver a different type of performance somehow. I always appreciate your candor and your honesty on everything that I ask you because you're no holds barred. You're not afraid to really put it out there. But I've always been curious about this. When you're up on a stage at a festival with 15, 16,000 people plus, and you've got the sun beating down on you, what thoughts are really going through your head in that moment? Because I would find that very intimidating just between the heat, the people, the delivery. What goes through your head? Well, I have to tell you something. I actually close my eyes most of the time. You know, you don't know that because I wear sunglasses on stage and get in a zone and, and sing and, and just do my, my thing. You know, uh, I want to make sure I, I can deliver. I want to make sure that I can please the crowd. 
I want to make sure that I, you know, my, my vocals are, are good, the sound is good. I'm worried about all that and worried about giving a, giving the f- fans a great performance. So that goes through my mind as my eyes are closed because you don't know that. But uh, well, we it's, do now. <laughs> yeah, you do now. But I usually, a lot of artists actually sing with their eyes closed. But when I sing, I just put myself in a zone and I concentrate. When I was speaking with Robert Sarza with Queensryche, I had asked him what a similar question, and he had said he closes his eyes and then he gets lost in the trance like you do. But he said sometimes he gets so far in the groove he forgets what song he's playing, and then he has to kind of wake himself up, and he's like, oh, crap, I'm on the wrong song. So <laughs> there's always that, too, although you were spot on this weekend. And what do you like to give the concert goers to get their more bang for the buck? And you kind of already answered that, but you really did get up there and invigorate that audience. There were many great bands before you kind of came on mid-show, but when you guys took the stage, you had so much audience participation going on. Is that the key to really communicating and getting it out there with an audience of that size? Is to just get them interacting and rocking back and singing those lyrics along with you? Thank you. Um, yeah, it, it is a bit, but I think the most important thing is to give uh, people honesty. Honesty is a big word. And uh, honesty, I'm just kidding. Uh, I was just thinking uh, that song. <laughs> it's that a lonely song. word, too, according uh, yeah. to Lee Joel. I think you have to be honest and go on stage and give it all. You don't want to just be on stage and, and play the entertainer or like, raise your hands, say yeah, yeah. It's just not about that. I mean, yes, it's a part of the rock and roll show, but I think you have to be honest. People want to want to see honesty. People want to hear honesty. And um, when you sing, you have to be real. When you talk to the crowd, one has to be real. If you feel the crowd, if you know they're doing great, just tell them. It says, hey, you guys are doing great. I'm so so happy to be here. But you have to mean that. It's not like, hey, it's glad to be here tonight. And then you're like, really? I mean, I'd rather do something else. No, you can't be saying that if you don't feel it. Yeah, you know, the show is great only if the audience is great, put it this way. I mean, you can be as good as you can be, but if the audience is dead, it's not going to go that far. If the audience is uh, wonderful, then you have a wonderful show. Speaking of concerts, you have a multitude of concert dates booked up well into 2015, I think February we had mentioned. There's another factor behind this, Terry. Where do you find the stamina to keep touring like this? And you're all over the place every day like this. I- well, thanks. I mean, martial art means a lot to me. I mean, I don't do that to beat up people, which I don't, by the way. It's it's a way of life. I mean, for me, I've been doing martial arts since I was a kid, and um, and teach. I teach. Uh, I'm an assistant, a teacher, and um, I do it for free because I, it's it's a passion. And my daughter is one of my students, so you know, I get to see uh, little kids, and they're happy. Or they look at me, they're like, "Oh my God, my teacher's got black nail polish." Oh my God. <laughs> I <think laughs> I'm sure that's quite the experience for them. They say, "Hey, I saw you on YouTube." <laughs> so I think it's it's fun, but uh, yeah. I might have been... to check into that because I think the last time I kicked anything was a can when I was like eight, playing kick the can outside. So that kind yeah. of tells you my uh my, my get up and go mojo over here is kind of lacking, Terry. <laughs> if you can't, I totally understand. And not everybody, you know, we have different lives. We have kids. We have things. So it's all right. That's all right. I'm going to learn from Terry Elus and uh, try and get into the martial arts thing here, which I'll probably scare a lot of people and hurt myself in the process because I'm a klutz, but that's okay. While there's many concerts uh, that Great White will be giving between now and September 27th, and that stamina is going to come in handy there too, it will be on that date where you're going to be cranking the crowd up to 11 again at this year's Desert Rocks Concert Series September Fest out at the AVA Amphitheater in Tucson, Arizona. This show will also be featuring fellow farm rocker Sebastian Bach, Striper, and Extreme. Extreme's going to be playing their porno graffiti album in its entirety, which is also really cool. Wish I could be out there for that because I loved that album. And here's a song sure to get even the driest of cactuses salivating for more. So let's get ready to get the funk out with Extreme. So far today, we've learned that you close your eyes on stage (laughs) and you don't beat people up which is good to know. You shop at Trader Joe's and you do jingles for Dr. Pepper, which is always very cool. I don't know if you drink any of that, though, because that doesn't... No, I don't. I I do not. I drink uh, drink water and and, and a nice glass of wine once in a while. That's, That's about it. Up after the break, Terry talks about Great White's future plans and opens up about his battle with depression and addresses the controversial comments made by Gene Simmons a few weeks back. 
What is a rockasm? A rockasm occurs when you dim your lights as you lie down in your bed and suddenly find yourself going... You're listening to Rockasms, where the music hits you in all the right spots. Welcome back to Rockasms with Jen Mitchell. More of my interview with Terry Elus of Great White continues right now. After your touring is over, though, Terry, does Great White have any new plans for an album? And if so, can you give us any details or juicy tidbits in there? I, I don't think we're going to cut an album. I don't think we're going to record an entire album per se. But we've talked about uh, recording new songs, writing new songs. I believe that recording an album, 12 songs, 14 songs, is a thing of the past. I think nowadays the best way to approach it is to record two to three songs at a time and then wait another six months and record two or three songs at a time. That's the way to do it. That's the way we want to do it. Because nowadays people just want to hear one or two songs, oh, that's it, and then they move on to another artist. I'm pretty uh, keen on what's happening out there as far as the media, as far as uh, new technology, as far as all that stuff. And I think it's more exciting for the fans because they get something uh, new every uh, three or four months. Right. You know, I've often said this on the show and and just in passing to friends in casual conversation, how technology kind of perseveres in the society now. And I think whether we all realize it or not, we're kind of all put into the position of being in an ADHD land. We're so distracted by other things around us. So when you feed people too much all at once, they tend to forget so many of that. So I think you're smart in putting out one or two and keeping your finger on the pulse of society that way and realizing that that's probably the, the better way or a different way to go about it where you can maybe get more people's attention without overloading them all at once. Well, you, you know, Jen, there's no more labels. I mean, labels are a thing of the past, you know, unless you're Maria Carey or something, you're going to need a record company. But if you're not, you don't need a label. You don't need all that. You just need a good publicist, uh, a YouTube account and blah, blah, blah. And YouTube and Facebook are basically the new record companies, I call them. You know what I mean? People go there to you're right. You go on YouTube to see what's happening, and that's the way it is right now. And if you don't adjust, you're just going to die like dinosaurs did. Right. You see a lot of uh, talent born just through YouTube alone, YouTube stars, and things go viral. And But I also see a lot of crap. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh. <laughs> I wasn't going to say that, but now that you brought that up, um, yes, and I'm not going to mention certain names here on that, but... But it's okay. I think it's a great opportunity to to discover a new artist uh, that would have never been discovered 20 years ago. But the problem is, they get discovered, and then two seconds later, you move on to another artist, and you forget that name. Who, who was that again? That's a distraction. That's the ADHD setting in. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Nowadays, you just don't have time. You so many great artists. Well, Terry and Great White have made it very easy to see them and you don't always have to go to YouTube for that either because tickets are currently on sale for the Great White performances by visiting them on the web at officialgreatwhite.com. Fans will also have the option to purchase either the Rocky VIP package or the Shark Tank VIP package which includes some phenomenal perks for avid Great White fans. Terry, you want to tell fans what they'd be in for if they purchase one of those packages? I think when people come to meet the band, they usually get surprised because we like to spend time talking to them. And it's not like a quickie, like, a, oh, we take a picture and then see you bye. I, I just don't like that. I don't think it's right. I think it's important for us to spend the time in, and talk to the fans. Uh, we did a meet and greet uh, in uh, Chandler, and uh, it lasted, I think, 30 or 40 minutes. You have to understand, Jen, that I'm a fan as well. There's a lot of artists that I really love and admire, and getting a chance to meet them is a great great thing. Again, it goes back to the word honesty. <laughs> it's funny. You have to be honest with the fans and give them love. You know, I mean, they give you love if you think about it. Fans support the bands. Without the fans, there would be nothing. I mean, you need the fans. So the least we can do is be uh, respectful and be honest and spend time with them. Terry Elus, not a wham bam, thank you, man, ma'am sort of guy. <laughs> I tried really hard to meet you this weekend, and I think um, traffic kind of got in our way, literally. Yeah, it is. Uh, 
Hopefully next time you come around, I'll be able to stop by and do this interview in person with you. I hope so. Everyone out there, you can find more details on the Desert Rocks Concert Series September Fest at officialgreatwhite.com as well, or by visiting solcasinos.com, and I'll spell that for you, which is S-O-L, very simple. Not to be yeah. confused with S-O-B or... It's a a beautiful casino, actually. It's a beautiful casino. Yes, I I saw the pictures online. Very, very beautiful venue. And anyone that's going to that is going to have a great time, as they would to any of your concerts. Not to suck up, but it's true. I mean, you guys really put it out there and do a phenomenal, I can't even express that enough, phenomenal job giving the fans everything that they want. So everything that you just said, you stand by. Because there's a lot of smoke and mirrors in this industry, as you know. People saying and promising a lot and not delivering. That's not you guys at all. No. You're there in the moment with it. Now, I want to switch gears here really quick because I wasn't sure if we were going to be able to talk about this, but as I mentioned to the listeners before, you're a very candid guy and not afraid to say uh, right. what needs to be said. When I was on my three-week hiatus, there was a lot of major music news that went out, including Kiss bassist Gene Simmons, who grabbed headlines a few weeks back during his recent interview with SongFacts.com for suggesting that people battling drug addiction and depression should go F themselves, and later said if someone was going to jump off a building, they should shut the you know what up and have some dignity and just jump there was a lot of fallout from what simmons said in his provocative remarks following with the radio stations banning his music and it sparked this public outcry you've been very upfront about your struggle with depression so when you hear someone of his stature saying something like that how does that affect you as someone who is in the industry but also struggles with depression well, you know, depression is, is an illness. You know, it's not something you, 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 can, you can fix overnight. I, I do believe it's genetic. My mom suffered from depression. And I remember um, going to see doctors when I was a kid as well. You know, they gave me Valiums and they gave me all kinds of stuff, you know. It's a very difficult subject. In Simmons, what Jim Simmons said is, I'm not going to criticize him or analyze him or whatever. He said what he had to say, you know. I can only say that I've been through that and I, I tried to commit suicide a few times, you know. I, I know what it's like to uh, to spend uh, a lot of, uh, many months in a hospital because you, you, you try to commit suicide. So I know what it's like. <sighs> Even talking about it, is, it brings uh, back emotions. Um, well, you know, no, Eric, you don't mind me interrupting here. I think depression is a hard thing for certain people to wrap their brains around because it's not something you can physically see generally. I mean... You can tell by looking at somebody in their eyes what kind of mood they're in. But I'm talking, it's not like an appendage that's casted up or, you know, crutches that you're using. It's it's an invisible thing, but it's so present and it's, it is an illness. It's not, oh, yeah, I'm just going to go eat a bunch of chocolate and my life is great. It, it's a struggle uh, to be it, down. It is a struggle that... I have to say that it's a struggle, unfortunately, that would last, that would stay with you forever. I don't think it's going to go away. I remember uh, when, I, when I was taking antidepressant uh, 10 years ago, my doctor said, oh, you, you have to take antidepressant, they give you Zoloft, they give you this, they give you that. You know, we all have our ways of dealing with that. And I realized that, I said to myself, well, I have to meditate and I have to find a way to, to get rid of some of that depression. Now, would that go away forever? No. I can tell to, to the listeners listening to me right now, what I did is I started to work out more often. I changed my habits, meaning uh, I would go and see uh, uh, different friends. I would go to different meetings. I would uh, do different things during the day. You know what I mean? I would say I would push myself to do things. Okay, I know I have to get out of the house. Although you don't want to get out of the house, you have to trick the muscles. You have to trick the depression. Depression is like a, a living thing, you know, and that's the way I look at it. It's a demon. and. You have to trick the, the demon. So, oh, today I'm going to trick you. And it worked for me. Now, am I out of the loop? Not at all. I mean, there's times where I get depressed and I have low energy and I'm going through a depression phase. I'm like, okay, I got to do things. I, I think I will always get depressed. The difference is now I can control it more. Whatever you have to do, do it. But, but do something. Because if you don't do something, unfortunately, you're going to end up killing yourself. You're going to end up feeling not worthy, you a feeling that your life is not good enough, that you're not good enough. I'm not a good person and nobody loves me and blah, blah, blah. And then you kill yourself. It's what happened to Robin Williams, a wonderful uh, comedian and, and a wonderful artist. I mean, if you look at his pictures, he, he, he was a funny guy, but you look at his eyes, it was yes. quite sad. And that touched me when I looked at the pictures. I knew something was wrong. I'm like, he's, he's not really happy, you know, and it's really sad. But some people sometimes can get help, and some people can't. 
I just can say that I was lucky and I've been lucky so far. Now, who knows what can happen tomorrow or the day after. All I'm saying is it's a constant battle. It is not something you, you win and say, at least I won the war. No, we not win the war. What you can do is learn how to survive. That's the thing I can tell people. You know, I learned how to survive and, and so far I'm surviving. Very profound thoughts. And I think a great way of summarizing that is you found many coping skills and tools to help you. But very important, like what you said, it's a lifelong thing. It's not like you ever get over it. You may have slumps and downs and things like that and then things that you can do to help pick yourself up as you do meditating and your religion your very spiritual person your martial arts your music all those things are in place for you and on days where you're feeling down you just got to reach even deeper and realize you know this isn't going to be a permanent thing tomorrow like you said i might feel good i might feel bad but the point is you're trying and it's with that compassion in your heart which i think is lacking a lot in our society today without getting too preachy as long as you have empathy and compassion in your heart and understand what you're dealing with i think that helps too um, well, one thing i realized yeah you, you're absolutely right one thing i realized is by helping people by helping others i was actually helping myself so i go by the line all this time which is giving is receiving you do something about it you do something about it right and you have a good support system in place that that's yeah. always pivotal too you don't want to feel alone in a situation like that no. I do want to say that Terry and I are not bagging on Gene Simmons in any way, shape, or form or comments he may have made because since then he has publicly apologized. And I think it's important right now because I, I don't want to be like the, the rest of the world. I want to show compassion too. And I like to think I learned a little something from you today, Terry. So I think right now would be a good time, even though they're not part of the September Fest concert series that you're going to be in. I'd like to play a Kiss song right now. And so. show them some love and support. And hopefully, like you said, uh, giving is receiving. So right now, off of Crazy Nights from 1987, is Kiss with Reason to Live. Well, Terry, I definitely look forward to hearing all that you have to offer in the future. It's been a real pleasure as well to have you on Rockasms today. Please, please, please come back anytime. You're always a, a welcome Thanks. guest on the show. Thank you. I'd like to round out today's segment with your personal selection from Alation. So which song can concert goers expect to see you slaying it on with those killer pipes at September Fest and any other concert they might see Great White in? Oh, thank you for that. Uh, awesome. I would say I like to play uh, off the Elation album, uh, Hard to Say Goodbye. Hard to Say Goodbye is a song written for my daughter, and uh, it's my favorite song of the album. You, you know, I was uh, I was away at one point, and uh, it was very difficult not to spend time with my daughter. And um, it's a song that a father wrote for his daughter. It's just a very touching and emotional song, you know, very, very heartfelt. And again, very honest. <laughs> and while I'm watching you explain all that, your eyes are lighting up, so it's very clear to see how much you love your daughter, and I can definitely relate to that with mine, too. Even though see? she's kind of a <laughs> interesting little beast at times, I still love her with all my heart. Always hard to say goodbye to you, Terry, but hopefully we won't have to say goodbye for too long, and you'll come back and give us some updates on how your tour is going. So right now, with Terry's pick off of Elation from 2012, is Great White with Hard to Say Goodbye. Thank you so much again, Terry. Thank you. 